In our last video, we looked at how to build a query. It was a real simple query that displayed all the rows that we wanted and only from a single table. Let's take a look at how we can modify that query to include another table and bring in related information. So here's my query that I had before. And if I just double click on it, you'll notice that it opens it up in data sheet view, just the same as if I were to open up a table by double clicking on it. Now I can click on the design view or when my query is not open, I can right click on it and choose design view and open it that way. Now, in order to join a table, I need to add a second table to this panel here. One way to do it and the quote unquote correct way is to click on the add tables and then choose the table you want, such as vendors. You can double click on the table name which will automatically add it, or you can select the table name and then click on the add button. Once we're done with this, I'm going to click close and you'll notice that it shows the relationship here automatically. That's because access knows about all of our relationships. If I added this table on accident, however, I'm going to simply select it and notice it's highlighted and click the delete key. Now, another way of adding this and from my tables on my left hand side, I can click and drag it over. Notice that it once again adds that table to the pane and that relationship. Now right now I only have field names that are products and you can see this because it's from the table. Notice I have products. Well, let's say I want to add some additional fields from my new vendors table. Well, I've already got vendors names showing up from under my products. But what I don't have is contact person or phone number. So I'm going to add those two columns as well. If I click on my data sheet view, it comes up and notice that it displays the appropriate vendor information, the contact and their phone number with the vendor. There are a couple of small changes I do want to make. However, one is I want to resize my vendor field. So I'm going to double click on that space in between vendor and category and notice it automatically resizes it for me. I can do this with any field, including, for example, contact person. Notice that while the names there fit, my column header did not. Now it does. Now, one thing I don't like about this is the fact that my category is splitting the vendor and my contact person. So what I'm going to do is go into my design view. I'm going to highlight the category and the way I did that was I just clicked on that little gray bar above category. I'm going to click and drag it to my left. And when I do notice that I have a highlighted spot, this is where this column is going to go. It's going to move now between discontinued and vendor. So now vendor comes from my products table, but contact person and phone number both come from my vendors table. All this information is possible because I'm creating an inner join with data between two tables. If I click on my view drop down and choose SQL view, you'll actually notice that it has right in here inner join. And so this is using a SQL command to store the information. The query window, which is what we see in design view, is just there to make our lives a lot easier. I can click on my data sheet view and notice that all of my information is now displayed just as I had laid it out. All my columns are in the same order. I kept my spacing, the column sizes, all that information is there. If I want to save this query, I'm going to click the save button. And what's actually being saved is not the information in here, but that SQL command. So every time I open this query and look at it in data sheet view, what it's going to do is it's going to go run the query, bring back the results and display them for me. So this works very effectively for me because as my data gets updated, I add new products, new vendors, combinations of those two. I'm going to get an updated view of my information. I don't have to go back in and recreate this query again. In our next video, we're going to look at how do we filter out some information. Now, if I had to join a lot of tables, it would actually be very similar. Let me show you. 
I'm going to close my query, go to Create, choose Query Design, and I'm going to choose Customers, Invoices, Line Items, Products, and I'm going to leave it as that. I don't need my vendor information to create an invoice. Now I have my four tables, they're all lined up, and I get to choose my information. I'm going to choose almost all of my information from customers. First name, last name, phone, and email. Notice I just double clicked on them and it automatically added them in that order. I'm going to choose date created under invoices, date fulfilled, and paid. I don't need to choose customer because I have that information for my customers table. I'm going to choose quantity and then over here I'm going to choose product name and retail price. This is all the information that I'm going to need. I don't need to have information about my vendor or my category. I don't need to know how many items are in stock. I'm just looking to create an invoice. If I click on my datasheet view, you notice it provides all this information. I have two different people here with invoices. John Doe has an invoice that's created on 321. It has not been fulfilled, although it has been paid, and I have two different line items. That means two different products were added to this invoice. With Mary Smith, I only have a single line item. So we can see the different products that are listed on each individual invoice because they're associated with different line items. Now, if I were to open my customers table, you notice I actually have a third person here, Lance Maker. But notice that he did not appear inside of my query. That's because Lance has not created an invoice yet. So Access is smart enough to be able to look at all those tables and figure out how they're being joined and what data needs to be displayed. And if data doesn't exist in the two tables that are part of that join, it's not going to display them. So we could have products that aren't being displayed, invoices that aren't being displayed, customers, etc. If I look at my SQL view, you can see I have multiple inner joins where I'm combining all those different tables together in order to produce that query result. In our next video, we're going to look at how do we filter some of this information in order to make it even more useful for us.